All right, welcome to today's video. This is a system design video about e-commerce and e-commerce hosting platforms like Shopify. Let's go. Welcome to today's video. This is a system design video about platforms, e-commerce platforms like Shopify and other similar offerings. I'm not affiliated with any of them, but I thought it's an interesting challenge to take a look and try to figure out by myself how something like Shopify would work internally. Now, why do we make a video about Shopify and similar platforms and not any other e-commerce website? The reason is simple. Uh, e-commerce websites, they can be extremely complex and it's an interesting system design challenge, but a platform like Shopify allows the customer to create their own web shops, web stores, including the front end and the back end. And usually it's extremely simple and extremely fast. So without any technical knowledge, you can go there and you can create your own store. Now, to me at least, this sounds like an interesting challenge because in the background, there has to be a lot of automation and a lot of automated management of your resources, your shop, your front end, your back end, your APIs, and your databases, you know, all your inventory, all your products and everything. So let's take a look at how Shopify and similar platforms could be built. Okay, big disclaimer here, two disclaimers actually. First of all, I have no idea how something like Shopify is actually built. And in reality, it's gonna be a lot more complex than all the things that we're gonna talk about here today. This is one. Second of all, this is a system design video, but I cannot guarantee that every system design interview will go along as this video will. So we're gonna talk about a couple of interesting topics. We're not gonna cover every topic. We're gonna miss a lot of important and interesting topics, but as in every system design interview, you're never gonna cover everything. There's always gonna be focus areas, and it's important that you cover those and that you listen to your interviewer and follow along where he or she uh, steers the interview. So let's go. Now this Shopify topic is so complex and this domain is so big that we need to focus on a couple of very important bits and pieces. We can't um, you know, cover every topic that Shopify has, so we need to at least gather a couple of keywords. From those keywords, we'll um, drive and deep dive into the two to three key features and key elements. So if you, if you start with those keywords, um, just you know, write down what comes to your mind when you think about a platform like, uh, like Shopify. And as I said, this is step one. So uh, important keywords that come to my mind when I think about a platform like Shopify, definitely customers, uh, products and orders. And we also have things like payment methods. And so far, everything uh, looks like a very standard e-commerce website. Um, now, the more interesting part comes along with Shopify. You'll have customer products, orders, payment methods, but you'll have your own sort of uh, data storage, so whatever Shopify owns to run its own business. And then you have the whole other perspective where every Shopify customer who sets up a web store um, has its own customers, products and orders and everything. So we have to make this distinction between uh, Shopify, the company, so to say, and the, the shop owners. So let's put it down as the shop owners here. Okay, so we briefly touched on the distinction between the shop owners and the Shopify customers. So. If I go to Shopify or a platform like that and I want to create my online shop, um, to me at least, as somebody who has a background in technology, I would, want to, um, for, I would want for my shop to be as isolated as possible from every other online shop. This is important to me, but this could also be a, a very important business feature because it's you know, uh, required by law. So I could imagine that there are um, companies which uh, would want to host with uh, Shopify, um, but they would want to host um, their online shop managed by Shopify on their own premise, so on their own machine. Or at least they would want to uh, want to pick where exactly this shop is going to be hosted, you know, only in the EU or only in North America. 
Um, and for sure, I don't want to host my uh, products and all of my data in a database which is shared with other shop owners. Because imagine that something goes wrong and your products or your customer data shows up in a different store. So a big topic here is isolation. Okay, now when I think of something like Shopify, but also you know think of Squarespace and similar um, hosting platforms where you can go and create your own websites, um, I think of plugins, also WordPress, for example. Um, this is an this is a, an area, a domain where it's extremely important to build more and more feature and allow your customers to plug in more functionality into their product. So plugins is an important point. And then lastly, uh, let's talk about the functionality of maybe having your own front end, so your own website where you just talk to the Shopify backend. So potentially you're uh, a web designer, a front end developer, you're comfortable hosting your own front end, um, you have a very specific design in mind, but you don't want to deal with the storage layer, you don't want to deal with all the administration. Maybe uh, you're not comfortable dealing with payment methods and uh, payment management, so to say. So then you would want to use something like Shopify, but only the backend part of it, right? So um, we have to talk about the storefront. So the storefront, I mean, um, the website, so to say, the front end. Versus uh, the back end of the store, so uh, the inventory, the products, and all the data. And definitely, when we talk about the back end and these two components, and maybe switching out one component which is not hosted by Shopify, we need to talk about APIs. Okay, we talked about a lot of features here, a lot of keywords that come to mind when you think about a platform like this, but we can't tackle all of it. You could come up with even more, right? You could talk about analytics, you could talk about you know, authentication and login with maybe um, um, third-party authentication mechanisms, but we can't cover everything. So we need to figure out what makes a platform like Shopify important, what makes it good, what makes it unique, right? So let's focus on three key areas and let me draw some boundaries here. Second step, the three key features. Um, and what I would say, what's the, what's the unique selling point, right? The unique selling point is you go there as a customer, no technical background, no idea about programming, um, front-end development, HTML, CSS, whatever, and it allows you to create the store in a few minutes, you know, maybe you know, fine-tune it for a few hours, but they do all of it. So the three things that come to mind here is an automated storefront creation, Um, then they would also create and manage the backend for you. So backend, and ultimately they uh, create it, they host it, and they wire it up all together. So there's the network, there's the um, domain management, you know, setting up the DNS, uh, setting up the proxies. Um, protecting it against against DDoS attacks and so on. So let's just call it hosting and networking. Okay, now we have the keywords, we have the key features. Now we know what to focus on. Now let's jump into a very high level system design where we draw you know, the, the, mer the very basic components, the high level components. You need to start at a very high level because if you dive right into one of the areas, so if you dive right in, let's say, um, the backend architecture. You're gonna miss how everything is wired together. So you want to start at a very high level. Um, and you know what I usually do is I start at the, the customer level. So the the visitor of the website, so to say. 
I'm interested in creating a store. Um, I have no idea how to do it. So I find this website and I visit Shopify, right? So, um, so let's say we have a browser here. And this person here visits the Shopify website. Now, they will see a lot of static content, of course. They will see you know, all the offerings that Shopify has. Then they will create an account or something like this. And let's jump into this, the creation of the store, right? So there has to be some sort of a component which uh, orchestrates the creation of such a store. And in reality, this is gonna be a lot of smaller components playing together. But as I said, we need to start on a high level and then we'll zoom into it. Um, so let's call this the store orchestrator. Okay, what are we doing with the store orchestrator? Um, we talked about automated store creation. Okay, so I guess the store orchestrator will play a big role in this automated creation. Um, and we talked about hosting networking. So this thing, imagine it like the brain of, of uh, Shopify. When you as a customer go there and you want to create your own store, this knows every step uh, on how to get there, what to create and what order to create it. So the big question will be, how do we implement this automation and how do we achieve this isolation that we talked about? What comes to my mind in such a case is containerization or at least automatic creation of virtual machines. So what we could do is we could host each storefront, each backend, each database with you know, the customers, the products and the orders um, in a virtual machine which is containerized. So there is a, a Docker container which has an, an exact recipe, so to say, of what to create um, and how to link it together. So there is something like a, a template, template of a single store and every customer that goes to the website and creates one, of the, one, one account with a store the store orchestrator will uh, instantiate one of those containers and will create all the resources that are needed. So how could this look like? I put this here. Um, we'll have a big layer here. And imagine this is, this is not uh, like a physical machine. This is just a logical diagram, so to say. Um, this is the layer which, which owns all the components that are owned by each customer. It hosts all of them. So there's going to be an environment for customer one, we'll call it C1, and a very separate environment for customer C2. So each of those environments can have, you know, let's say if it's AWS, it can have EC2 instances, it will have its own set of APIs, uh, maybe configured by API Gateway, it will have its own databases like you know RDS databases um, and it will come so to say isolated by nature right because they're all their own instances maybe they're their own AWS accounts so to say they will not be connected to each other the only thing that they have in common is that they talk so to say to the store orchestrator now when the store orchestrator wants to create a new environment for a new customer so let's call it CN customer new um, then there's going to be a template. So this is the T. This is the template that contains you know, all the resources, so to say, the EC2 machines, the databases, the, the gateways, the, whatever, the proxy settings, everything. Um, and the store orchestrator talks directly, um, so to say, with this, with this template here. This could be, as I said, a Docker container which gets instantiated for this new customer. Okay. I'm sure you can already think of a couple of advantages and disadvantages of this design, but let's follow along here and let's zoom into this template here, right? So let's zoom into um, this component. Let's draw it a little bit bigger. So this is, this is the, the template for a brand new Shopify shop, right? So this template it's like, a, imagine it like a recipe. So the store orchestra orchestrator kicks it off and then it, you know, it just executes step by step. 
first step could be create an EC2 or whatever virtual machine, so to say, instance uh, with certain properties, you know, certain CPU, certain memory, and so to say. So, well, let's make boxes instead of numbers. EC2. Um, and I need some more space here because we can't forget about the APIs, of course. So let's make this box down here. Okay, step one could be create an EC2 instance, right? And step um, two and three, we could deal about we could deal with uh, with a data storage, with a layer of you know creating your your relationships between customers, products, orders, maybe even payment methods. Although with payment methods, you could hold off for now and you could outsource it, so to say, to a third party and you could only accept, let's say, PayPal if you want. So you don't need to deal with, you know, very high security um, and critical data, so to say. So let's say step two of this template uh, is to create um, a database with multiple tables and it's going to be the same for every shop, right? Because this is like a skeleton. Every shop will need, at least in the beginning, the same kind of um, storage layers. So there's going to be a table which is the customers, there's going to be a table which is the products, and you know, oversimplifying, of course, another table which is for orders. Okay, as I said, very important is this distinction between the storefront and the backend APIs. So you could think of this template only defining the backend if you want, right? We could do it this way. So the last thing that this template needs to do is to define an API layer. This could literally be an API gateway um, uh, definition, you know, built with cloud uh, with CloudFront. I mean, uh, CloudFormation. So you'll have APIs here, and those APIs will act as um, the gateway to interact with your store. So it will allow you to create customers put in an order, um, retrieve the order history of a customer, all these, th all these things. And the nice part is these can be public, right? So you can use your own store frontend if you're a bigger company or if you have a store frontend already, you're not interested in this storefront creation that Shopify gives you. You can talk about, you can talk with your own store through these set of APIs. Now, of course, we have to go back and also look at uh, the Shopify infrastructure that they need for their own customers, right? So this is a template. This is, um, you know, customer two and customer one. They have their own complete infrastructure. Um, but of course, Shopify itself will also need a, a storage layer, for example. And another layer here, which uh, serves as a as a controller um, for its own business logic, for example. So there could be, let's just call it a control layer. And there could be um, a storage layer, which has the Shopify customers and maybe their subscription, because this is, uh, I think at least a subscription based system. So we can have um, a subscription table in here, for example, and there could also be things like themes and more front-end related things. So at, those have to be stored somewhere as well, right? So there's going to be a markup or code for, for themes and these kind of things. So this is all going to be in its, in its own Shopify storage layer with a control layer. And um, there could be a control application that manages this side of thing. The store orchestrator will leave it separate as its own module, so to say, on purpose, because it's very specialized uh, and specializes in creating a new store based on a certain template. Now let's take a step back and see what we already achieved. Um, we talked about automated store creation, so the store orchestrator plays the biggest role here. Um, this thing will create our backend, so point two, um, it will create the, the backend of the shop. Um, there's nothing, you can also just create the front end with this orchestrator, right? And we'll talk about this in a minute. And um, what we haven't talked about so far is this hosting and networking part. 
We talked a little bit about hosting, of course, because these resources here are going to be created in the cloud somewhere. You know, it could be hosted by Shopify, but you know, potentially could be hosted by uh, Azure or EC2 or something. I mean, AWS or something like this. So we talked about the hosting part, um, but let's dive into a bit more detail and let me erase this uh, this diagram here so we get a bit more space. Before we dive into more detail, let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this um, design here, where every shop is its own box, its own component, its own container maybe, um, compared to a system where you know you have a few databases with a few tables. There is like one big, um, one big customer table, and every shop owner would just own a few rows in this table, right? So compared to, to, to the setup we just draw, there's a lot less isolation. So one of the big advantages is this isolation. So let's take the plus here. So isolation. You have your own database, your own application layer, your own uh, virtual mach machines, and potentially you could even uh, host those components on your own premise, right? So big companies, which is uh, which is interested in that kind of stuff, they could use the same templates that Shopify offers, and Shopify could still manage it, but they would set it up on on their machines. So is isolation um, is is a big plus here on premise. We'll put it here as well. Uh, it's a big plus because if you would just you know create a few tables where all the Shopify customers uh, would share um, tables with orders and, and, and so to say, and, and customers, you couldn't just extract one of those customers and then put it somewhere else. So this, is a, the, this design gives you a certain flexibility. What this also gives you is a system which is not dependent on a single point of failure, right? So if all the Shopify customers and their online shops would share the same storage layers, maybe the same uh, infrastructure components, you have a single point of failure. If Shopify is down, so to say, then you know, everything is down in, uh, on, in your shop. So we'll see that in a minute, but um, let's talk about resiliency. So here are the advantages, isolation, so privacy. Um, we have the flexibility of an on-premise solution if you want to. And we have a resiliency because everything is its own component and uh, has no disadvantages when uh, other components, other shops would have an outage. But there are also a few big disadvantages. Because everything is hosted as its own box, there is a certain maintenance overhead. Now, let's make an example. If you um, create a hundred or a thousand of those customers' uh, stores along this template and then you realize you would want to change something in this template. Uh, maybe you want to change the, the database schema in a template and, and you want every uh, customer's store to follow this new schema. You have to migrate every instance of, these, uh, of your customers. So now all your 1000 stores with your 1000 databases, which have the old schema, need to, migrate it to, uh, need to be migrated to a new schema. And that's, of course, that makes it a bit more um, inflexible and it creates a, a bigger maintenance overhead for Shopify, for you as the company managing and hosting all of this. So let's call it maintenance. And the other disadvantage I can think of is definitely cost. Because everything is its own box and it will has to be it has to be hosted by itself, there is going to be a, a cost overhead um, compared to a system where you have a few um, tables and a few databases, a few application layers, where you can optimize and you know shrink down as much as you need. With um, strict isolation like this, you'll have to create more resources and you have to maintain more. Um, just little components which can add up to a big amount. So not a not very scientific approach here, but uh, at least my, my um, view on things tells me that this is going to be more uh, costly. 
Good. So advantages and disadvantages, I'm sure you can find more of both. Um, but let's go ahead with the design and let me erase some of the stuff to get more space. So what we still need to talk about a little bit more is the, the whole hosting and the whole orchestration. And again, I like to start at the customer and I like to start at the beginning of this process and then go step by step through this creation of a store and then how everything is wired together. Now again, let's take a color here and um, let's think about how everything comes together. Definitely we'll need our store orchestrator again. So this is the brain again. Um, and we need a customer who now, let's say, triggers the creation of a, of a store, right? So, okay, create, there's a create command, which, uh, which comes from this, uh, from this story. This could be a REST API if you want. Um, of course, after the customer has been authenticated, after the customer has, you know, purchased a subscription and so on. So there's a create command, the orchestrator now kicks off its big machine and, uh, and starts working. Okay, so we'll start with uh, what we just talked about. The store orchestrator will create um, this box with all the resources which are customer specific. So this is gonna be C1, customer one. It's our first customer, let's say. Um, there's gonna be a computation layer or something or an application layer. So this is, let's say an EC2 instance. And there's gonna be, right, so we talked about this before. Um, this thing will, as, uh, as we mentioned, expose a set of APIs. And these APIs, of course, they could be uh, specific for, for every shop. So for example, um, if you want to go into a lot of uh, detail and you want to offer a lot of interesting feature as the company Shopify, you could allow the customer to customize this set of APIs and to introduce you know, additional authentication met methods or introduce um, you know, roles and permissions. So I could imagine that you have one account with Shopify and your store has multiple internal accounts where only the store owner can you know, change the resources and maybe add products uh, and something like that. But multiple associate accounts can um, only use certain APIs to read the, the, the shop's status. So they could you know, look at the orders, so they could pack it up and ship them. So there's a, there's a lot you can do with, uh, with, 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 let's just say, roles and authentication here. Okay, so now let's also assume that uh, customer one is interested in the back end and the storefront and the front end, um, and the customer does not want to you know, work with HTML and CSS. So they will use all the, um, the, the content management systems that Shopify uh, you know, offers. And this is a completely different topic, of course, that you can dive into how uh, content management systems work. We're not gonna do that today, but let's assume that the store orchestrator can also create a template, like a WordPress template, so to say, of you know, HTML, CSS, and maybe JavaScript for you with a skeleton storefront. Let's draw this here. So the store orchestrator, when the create command comes in, will create, this is a one-time action here, this whole setup down here, all the resources here, and also a one-time action, it will create static, a static content website, which has some JavaScript in it. This JavaScript is gonna be wired up to exactly this set of APIs here. So um, this could be a REST API, and this, has, this is not a one-time action. Um, this front end then through the JavaScript application, which could be, you know, whatever you want, Angular or React, um, talk to these, to these APIs. And now you can already see that this is gonna be its own stack, which is, uh, you know, to a certain degree uncoupled from, from Shopify. So 
the creation now is mostly done, right? So we have a lot of code which creates the front end, it creates the back end. You know, in here, of course, there can be a lot of a lot of detail. You can dive into a lot of things like you know plugin mechanisms and so on. And, and maybe payment methods as well. So how do you manage the payment methods in this? Or do you use a separate uh, third-party uh, service for that? But what we need to talk about now is how the traffic comes into the system and how it hits your front end. And there can be, you know, you have a couple of options here, but let's talk about one where Shopify has its own proxy layer, which will take all the requests and um, forward it to your, to your system here. So I'm going to take this blue color again. So blue will be components that are owned by, by Shopify. And let's draw a, let's draw a big proxy layer here. Um, and what we haven't talked about so far is the, the, the DNS and the uh, domain level. Right, so when you create one of those stores, they will also create um, DNS settings and uh, you know the C name uh, management for you. Um, that means you choose and you always also pay for um, a top level domain. Um, so let's say the store orchestrator also takes care of that, and they go and also create, you know, with all the whatever it is dot com the domains and up here there is the DNS so they will populate the DNS uh, with this new domain uh, and they will point it to this proxy layer for example so this proxy layer will take this request and they will know that once a customer or you as the owner you hit this uh, IP address or first you will hit the, the domain and then the IP address this proxy layer will exactly know how to forward it to your front end and of course you will notice that this proxy layer here is actually a component that is owned by Shopify so if this thing is not working this is a bit of a single point of failure but it also gives you a couple of advantages right so this proxy layer here can be used um, to protect all the shop frontends and backends from things like you know uh, DDoS attacks and so on um, you could also think of the proxy layer being created by the store orchestrator as part of um, every customer's shop, right? So you would have another green box up here, which replaces this blue box with its own proxy layer. But again, it introduces more and more maintenance overhead because then every customer will have its own proxy, but it's also thinkable. So we talked about customer one here, right? Let's grab a different color and this is going to be red for customer two. So customer two, let's say, comes in here and um, creates a different kind of account. Customer two is only interested in the, the backend here. So the star orchestrator will again create, based on this template, the very same skeleton of, uh, of all the resources. There's going to be an EC2 instance. and the database um, and a set of APIs. Oh, let me draw it the same way. A customer two has its very own front end, right? So now wherever this is hosted, um, because we have this set of APIs here, customer two can have its own whatever web application front end can be dynamic can be static doesn't have to be owned by or hosted by shopify at all and it's thinkable that this customer here would not use the proxy that is owned by shopify um, so they could talk directly with these apis here 
I know it's also thinkable that Shopify would decide to always go through this proxy layer um, because maybe these APIs here are these APIs here are, are internally not protected and the proxy would do the, the termination of everything. So multiple options here. But it gives you a very nice flexibility of you know having this template create the backend and uncoupled from the front end layer. Because the front end layer can change a lot, right? So let's say the store orchestrator or store management system um, will then just inject different HTML and different uh, CSS based on all the themes that Shopify offers. So you as the customer, you go to this admin, um, admin UI and you would want to change a theme. So a completely new set of HTML and CSS is going to be injected into this front end here that could be hosted in like an S3 bucket, for example. But the back end with all the components is not going to be touched at all. It's going to stay exactly the same. So all the product and customer tables and all the application layers are going to be exactly the same. Oh yeah, and just to be consistent here, this should be another one time action. This should be like this. But the creation here would be uh, one time, right? So the store orchestrator creates this uh, only once. We covered a lot of stuff. Let's check if we have everything here. So we talked about customer products and orders, um, payment methods. Well, you could you could build this into into these APIs um, and into your own application, of course. You could also, um, let's say, have a secure storage, so to say, which is owned by uh, Shopify and they own um, internally all the payment methods and all the payment management um, for, for all the shop owners, because maybe you don't want to put that into every uh, single um, uh, resource or environment here. Um, but you could also just rely on third party like you know paypal and i don't know amazon pay and these kind of things so we talked about the distinction between the shopify customers and the shop owners and their customers we talked a lot about isolation we haven't talked about plugins yet and plugins is an interesting topic because it can mean a lot of things um, but what you could interpret it in this way that because everything is its own little world and its own little environment, a plugin could just be a, another Lambda running in here or another EC2 instance running in here, which offers a different set of APIs and some more functionality, right? So let's say a regular shop of customer one would only offer a product database with, with products you can buy you know, in bulk or you know, single product, so to say, but there could be a subscription plugin, right? So there's going to be a, a, a little application inside of the store orchestrator, which will add this plugin to the customer one environment. Let's say it's a different EC2 host, which, um, or maybe not an EC2 host, maybe it's something like, um, you know, a, a workflow engine, which will allow customer one to offer subscriptions for their customers, you know, think of, I don't know, think of Amazon Prime or think of uh, Patreon and these kind of things where um, they can sell these subscriptions through their, their online front end to their online store and the subscription, um, the recurring payments are triggered in this little shop here. So plugins with this architecture, because everything is sort of say cloud native and, and isolated from each other, um, can be implemented really nicely. And it's gonna be, of course, built for every customer's needs, right? So this customer C1 will pay, pay an additional fee for those plugins. And customer two may be paying even less because customer two is not using the front-end functionality that Shopify <coughs> offers. And as a very last topic, let's talk about the operational aspects of this. So we have a lot of creation, you know, a lot of steps which go into the creation of all of this. Um, but Shopify as a company needs to make sure that this is all maintainable and it's running smoothly, right? So one thing that you need in a system of this size for sure are a lot of metrics and automated alarms um, and you know health checks, so to say. So you want to know if every single one of your uh, customer stores is alive, uh, can be reached and works as intended. So for sure, part of every template here, part of every shop, um, there's gonna be a component which 
you know, in, a, in an ideal world is completely separate from the store components, which is only doing um, the health checks, right? So there's going to be an HC component. This could be a Lambda, for example. Um, let me take the red one here. This could also be something, you know, like a cron job um, running uh, on, a, on a certain on a certain schedule, but but let's say this is a lambda which runs uh, every every few seconds or something like this. Um, this thing here will report the the healthiness of this whole environment of customer one to a Shopify system. So there's going to be a module down here which is our our monitor and alarm uh, component. And this will also offer an API. So this thing here, on a recurring basis, every few seconds, um, let's say every five seconds, will send a heartbeat to this monitoring component here. And uh, this thing can be, again, part of the template will be what exactly this, uh, this component will check. So this could be, are all the APIs reachable? You know, it could ping the APIs, it could measure the latency of each, of each API. Um, of course, the APIs themselves will also have um, latency metrics on them, right? So how long does it take to uh, make an order? You know, how long does it take to retrieve the order history of a customer? These kind of things. Um, so this component will know about not only the health checks, but also the metrics and the latency um, the exception count, you know, maybe even the logs, and um, it could go to this monitoring portal. Maybe the logs you want to stay, you want to keep them separate so that um, the customers can retrieve their own logs, isolate in their own system. It could also be some legal requirement, um, but at least the health checks would run into a component that is owned by Shopify. So, of course, the same would go here for. Um, for this shop, for customer two, and whatever happens, you know, data corruption in a database maybe down here, this monitoring portal would immediately notice that something is wrong in customer two's shop. So an alarm would go off and one of the, so to say, level one or level two uh, support engineers uh, from Shopify would, uh, would, would see this alarm and would then decide to look into customers to customer two's instance and to its uh, to customer two environment, and um, and do something about it, right? Maybe restart one of those machines um, or figure out where the corruption happened. These kind of things. Now, of course, the same the same goes uh, here. If this component that sends the the health checks, if this thing here fails. This monitoring could go both ways, right? So this monitoring uh, module uh, knows how many customer instances are out there and how many customer instances this certain uh, module is, so to say, observing and monitoring. And if it doesn't hear from, let's say, customer two's instance in a minute or five minutes, it would, and because maybe this this component fails, then this monitoring module would alarm again and say, hey. I can't hear from customer tools environment, something is wrong. And again, uh, an engineer or maybe an automated um, fallback would take place. Okay, we talked about a lot of things. Um, again, this has nothing to do probably how Shopify is set up in reality. This is one way of doing you know, something like this, at least in my mind. Um, think about it. You know, talk about it with uh, with friends and colleagues it's always interesting to to play uh, through those kind of examples in your own mind and maybe with other people i think it's very interesting because if you go one step further you could even do the, the ultimate inception here and you could eat your own dog food so to say you could uh, set up your own shopify based on the shopify uh, infrastructure that you build right so you could imagine that Shopify uses all its own infrastructure to create its own store to sell those uh, Shopify shops. 
Um, not sure if they're actually doing that, but it's, a, it's an interesting idea. Okay, this is today's video. I hope you liked it. Let me know how you would create and how you would design a Shopify platform. I'm really interested in your thoughts. Uh, also, if you have any kind of feedback, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see more of these videos, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. My name is Ramon Lopez and this is Success in Tech.